Alright guys, Gionia Brazil's regionals just finished on Sunday. Big regionals, but less than a thousand people, but still pretty big regionals, over 500 players. And we found an amazing deck that won first place. It was a bird control. Kind of scary that bird control is winning big regionals now because we already know how scary the stall is and the, the amount of control that deck has. Now basically it winning is uh, signifying to others that they should play the deck if they want to win. And that deck really is scary because it doesn't allow you to win the game. So we were going to show you guys the number one deck, but also we're going to talk about the top 16 decks from the Geonia tournament. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to love it. So let's jump right in, guys. Number 16 was Francisco Osorio, guys. He hit the Giratina V Lost Box. And we're going to talk about it. Two Sable Eyes here. So really interesting here. No Manaphys. No Greninjas, just going for the, uh, sorry, no no Jirachis or Manaphys, just the Greninja and the Cram, and then the Tinas and the Sableye. So his attackers are literally Tina, Sableye, Cram, and then Greninjas is his way to draw, and the Confes is his way to draw as well. I think Greninja is really good in a meta where Iona just screws you completely. Greninja gives you a chance to come back quickly. The problem is you would have to run many more Super Rods. And this is actually very interesting. Only two super rods. That's crazy. That means you have to play the game almost perfectly. Cannot make any mistakes. And uh, we see that he did really, really good here. And three path. Of course, the path is really strong here. And only ran two water energies, guys. Really strong deck. Lost box is going to be a little bit different with the Giratina. After post-rotation, you might have to add a couple of iron bundles because Flutterman can really shut down your comp phase and force you to play differently so you're gonna you're gonna have a bit of a difference but very very strong deck guys we are now seeing a lot more iona roxanne last box decks because they've realized they have the best uh, draw engine so if they if they're getting iono and it still doesn't stop them what if we can just iono the enemy and i think that does shut it down completely because no one has a draw engine like comfy does and Colrus, so this is really, really good. Uh, I think I do see a lot of value into Iono. It's just a little bit tough to fit in all these uh, Iono and boss. Maybe you can get rid of these rocks and just keep it to Iono, two boss. It's a lot of cards, but you can do that if you, for example, don't run any Poke Gears. That makes sense. He doesn't run any Poke Gears, instead, instead opts in for the Ionos. And the rock sense to save him whenever he needs it, and just got rid of all his pokey gears. Yeah, if you're not gonna run pokey gears, yeah, for sure you can. I you can run ten, maybe even twelve supporters. But the problem is you have to run uh, pokey gear sometimes. Certain decks like pokey gear, but this is just really good. Really low amount of switches, very small amount of. Uh, super rods and also a huge amount of. Supporters, but no Poke Gears at all. Very interesting. Just draw into whatever you can and play the game from there. Really interesting. Francisco got it to 16th place. Let's move on to Charizard EX here. Went for 15th place by Andre. Uh, two Charmeleon here. By the way, the guys, oh, okay, only one Charmeleon, sorry. But this Charmeleon, guys, shuts down the TMD vote really strong to keep this Charmeleon on board. The opponent can with the Jirachi and a Manaphy next to it, the opponent cannot deal with it at all. It cannot touch it unless it has boss. A lot of decks cannot get boss in time. We are seeing the Luminion, Rotom, and their Charizard here. So it's a very standard Charizard DX deck. Still performing really high. Only one level ball. Still doing really good. And of course, you, you would run for Arvin for Iono for this deck because... Uh, once Pidgeot is active, you can get anything you want, and you can if you can spam four Ionas, you win games, basically. You force the opponent to never be able to play the game. Moving on, another Giratina here, 13th, 14th place, Eduardo. Let's look at the difference here. This one is running a Spirit Tome, so it has a better matchup against the Mew. Uh, also has three waters, not only two. And then we also have a, have a difference here. So we are running a lot. Instead of running Poke Gears, we could just run more supporters. We are running one Poke Gear, but yeah, as you can see, he's just running more supporters. Of course, Avery's gonna be really missed, but I think post rotation, you, 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 I don't know if you even need Roxanne. I think you do one Roxanne, two Ionos, or two Iono, two Boss, four Chorus. I think that makes sense. And then you just get rid of your Poke Gears. 
and that way whenever you want to if you don't draw a chorus you just draw an iono but still risky i i know why people like the pokey gear it's very hard to fit in anything other than pokey gear into the deck Wow, this deck is running one escape, one switch, and two switch cards. So he only has four switching. So all his switching has to happen with his uh, energies. Absolutely impressive, guys. I'm impressed with this deck. Interested in your opinions? Go ahead, leave them down below. Charizard EX is going to be number 13. One V Guard energy. This Pokemon, this card is attached to takes 30 less damage from attacks from your Pokemon opponent's Pokemon. V. So this is really good against Giratina, I think, by Vinicius. Really cool option here. But yeah, basically besides that, you're running the Charmeleon, the one that cannot TM Devo, and then the Strandard, Lumineon, Rotom, and Jirachi, and Charizard. Okay, let's look at the difference here. He had to lose a couple supporters to fit in that V-Guard energy. Also running two Lost Vacuums, really big number. Also ran one escape rope. Good option here. All, all his tools, uh, he has really strong three tools. Three really strong tools that really help him with the mirror match, with the Giratina matchup, and also with just playing the game in general. Really good deck, guys. Really enjoying it. Charizard's doing really good, guys. Make sure you get inspired by this these Charizards. Another Spiritomb, Giratina, Lost Box. This one is running the Spiritomb. Uh, of course, to sh have a better matchup for the Mew. This ones are also running many more, one le uh, less Ionos, but more Averys. And yeah, two Super Rods looks like it's the perfect number here. Also, you could run two Poke Gears if you reduce your supporter number to draw in more choruses. Moving on, guys, we got a Chimpow Vax Caliber deck here. Let's look at this deck, see if there's anything crazy. Two Iron Hands, that's a little bit crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Two iron hands. What's what's the two iron hands for? And only two sea powers, no more. Then he also runs a Luminion, which means we run four seal stone. No, we just run Luminion so we can pick up Erida. Honestly, this might be an option you want to pick for Lost Box, but it's just you don't want to do that. It makes no sense for Lost Box. I get why Lost Box doesn't do this. Instead, the Poke Gear would just be better. But yeah, guys, we're not actually running any supporters. So it makes sense why the Dominion is here. Poke Gear doesn't even help us in getting what we need. But yeah, guys, really consistent deck here. Two Lightning Energies. It's got the three Candy, two Earthen Vessel. And yeah, it's basically the same as the Owen Cameraman's deck. And also the, very similar to the third place deck. So let's move on. Gardevoir here. Gardevoir is rotating out, thankfully. But still very strong matchup against a lot of decks. Anything special here? He's running the two row. Hmm, nothing special. Just a collapse, artisan, palpad. Yeah, just consistent. I'm not sure how many level balls he's running. Zero level balls, actually. What? This is crazy. So that's one crazy thing. No level No, there are level balls. Three level balls right there. Yeah, guys, if you're looking for a guard for deck, look at these two decks right here. Another 11th place. I believe, uh, or ninth place, sorry, Lucas. We got uh, the Gardevoirs, we got the Mew, we got the Manaphy, Greninja, Zacian, the Cressela. We also have very similar lineup here, just one less Ultra Ball. Very similar lineup, but uh, instead of the Avery Ran, the perfect Professor's Research. So yeah, guys, these are the Gardevoir decks you should be building. If you're looking to get inspired, make sure you get one of these two. Uh, look at one of these two decks and figure out which one you want to emulate the most. Get inspired with these decks. It really helps out to look at the best decks in the game. A Roaring Moon doesn't mess around. Doesn't even try to mess around. Try to attack with the Greninja. He's just going to go for the Roaring Moon. Obviously, he's got the Squawk ability. One more Pico, actually. That's weird. Usually, you see more. You see at least two. But yeah, that makes sense. One. Morpico for the Charizard matchups. Start the game with the Morpico attack is really, really good. Um, let's see, anything special about this one? Only running three Pokemon catchers. He is running only two Trekking Shoes. 
Oh, he is running the emergency jelly. I don't see any old uh, ancient capsules. It's only emergency jelly. It's very interesting. He also is running the taunt store, but no emergency capsules or ancient capsules. They're all for seal stones and emergency jellies. That's it. Really interesting deck, guys. Moving on, we got another Roaring Moon. Very similar number, very similar deck, actually. Almost identical to 8th place Roaring Moon. Let's look at this one. He's running the same thing, 4 Seal Stones. He's not running that uh, item, the, the Emergency Jelly. Uh, also, oh, uh, he's not running the Emergency Jelly, but he is running more Pokemon Catchers. He's running a Judge as well. Very interesting. This one's running Judge too. So it looks like they're both teammates. They're building the same deck almost. Just a couple of changes. They performed really well. Yeah, guys, look at these Rolling Moon decks for inspiration. We got an Entei V Iron Valley. And so this is the Medichomp Entei V. Actually made it to the finals here in, in Brazil. Really strong deck. You need a lot of switches for this. I would assume four switch, four switch card, and then four escape rope. Yeah, you do need that. And you'd run only one future energy capsule. That's actually very interesting. I, I, I thought you would run more. And then the team will for the Charizard matchups. And then also you're running Earthen Vessels so you can draw. You also run, I believe, that Magma Basin. Yeah, there it is. Four Magma Basin. So Entei can be useful anytime, not only certain times. And because you don't have any way to accelerate energy, your Magma Basin is the only way. Moving on guys, another Gardevoir deck, here's in 5th place, did really good Huan. 2 Gardevoir EXs, 2 Gardevoirs, 1, one Zation V, the 2 Collapse Stadiums, the Fog Crystals are there, the Workers are there, no Avery's in this one. And yeah, very interesting deck guys, no Turo, no Avery, just 2 Collapse Stadium instead, interesting. And now we have a cloth Electra deck, the cloth deck that has uh, that deals with special conditions. I can't believe it actually made it really high into the finals, but it makes sense. The deck is really strong and uh, does a lot of work very, very early. Can attack turn two immediately at 100 damage easily, consistently with a capsule. And you can get those capsules with the town store. He also is running to path to the peak really strong, but doesn't it shut down your cloth? Oh, it doesn't because your cloth is an attack. The tantrum blast is an attack. Oh, wow. It actually doesn't shut it down. And then Brute Bonnet is a regular Pokemon, so it doesn't shut that down either. Wow. It does shut down the Radiant. Sneasler. Also, he's running his own Spiritomb, so he has to be very careful. But uh, yeah, the cloth doesn't, the electrode doesn't care. He just, yeah, he doesn't actually run any V abilities. Wow, this is a really strong deck, guys. Uh, interested in your opinion, would you ever play this deck? Leave your opinion down below. Kind of like a, it's running kind of like a Charizard deck because you already got your attackers ready. The only bad thing about this deck is you have two prizers, but whenever you're falling behind, you can just go for the, for the cloth. Start attacking with that. You'll still have one prizers on board. It's a basic Pokemon. It's really, really strong, actually. All right, moving on, guys. We got four, three more decks. Another Sipao here. Very similar to the ninth place, C 11th place, sorry, William. This is Ricardo's third place. Uh, running the Luminion. Only four errors. Exactly similar to 11th place. Let's move on. There's a Palki Ice Rider. We actually watched the finals on stream for some reason it wouldn't upload the, the, the video i don't know why this is it's never happened like that before we watched the finals really strong game ice rider Cal calyrex is actually a very interesting deck it runs out of stream very quickly because once palkia uses v star you only can uh, get your your energies accelerated with the melanie and so if you're not drawing your melanies and you already used your palkia you're pretty much stuck there so i'm very surprised that this deck made it this far <laughs> But maybe he just has really strong matchups against a lot of good decks. And that's what happened. But I'm, I'm actually extremely surprised. There was literally no way for him to accelerate energy except to his uh, Ice Rider or Palkia. And uh, so the Sipao never attacked. Never. And if it did, it was like a lucky attack with uh, 
by attaching once per turn from hand. It's, it's actually crazy. He's also not running any energy switches, so I'm, I'm actually very surprised about this deck. But it did make it. Got second place. It's an interesting deck. Never seen before. I mean, we've seen Calyrex before, but this is just too much. This is too much. He literally just uses Palkia V-Star to attack with the V-Max, and that's it. And it's crazy, because all his attacks have to discard energy, and so every time he discards energy, he has to bring it back, and, uh, and the only way he can do that is with a Melanie and an attachment. So I guess Ice Rider can attack 240 every single turn, but you're leaving a 3 prizer on board. It's Unless you get Melanie, you cannot accelerate any energy on it. It's just interesting. But final place here, guys. Number one was the bird control, guys. Uh, we're not going to dive too deep into it, but there is some interesting stuff here. Like, only one Snorlax. Very interesting. Usually, you see a lot more of that. Only one of the Mimikyu. Also, he has that Chi Yu, so he can end games with it. Also, he's running this basically lineup of one off every single supporter because now you can find them with the Pidgeot EX anytime you want to. Also opted in for the Peony since a lot of times they don't get any uh, of their prizes really early. They get to still get some of their prize, prizes out of there even though they're not picking them. And then yeah a bunch of one-offs. The Fines Vest and Band actually made a lot of work during the game. Stormy Montes allows you to go through your deck every single turn. Make sure you, everything you need is in there. And yeah, really strong deck, guys. That's it. That's it for the top 16 from the Gionia Brazil tournament. What's your opinions, guys? Which one was the best decks? Leave your opinions down below. Let's talk about it. And yep.